It was a morning like so many other mornings for Simon. After working all night, he spent early morning mending and washing his nets, preparing for next evening's work. It's what he did. It's what he'd been doing his whole life. Uh, he was a fisherman with his brother Andrew. Uh, he had grown up helping his father catch fish to feed and provide for his family. And now, now it was his life. And this morning he was in no hurry to get home. Uh, I mean, the labor had been in vain, the nets were empty, and he really didn't want to face his wife and hear that uh, question, uh, how was the catch, dear? So he washed the nets. And he watched as a crowd gathered along the shore. Uh, the focus of the crowd was on the traveling teacher, healer, prophet from Nazareth. And now Simon was intrigued by Jesus. Uh, he'd been introduced to him by his brother Andrew, and he knew he was legitimate because Jesus had healed you know, Simon's mother-in-law. So he was interested, but he didn't want to get his hopes up. It seemed like every few years another would-be prophet, wannabe Messiah would show up and everybody would get all excited and then disappointment would come. And he wondered why would this time be any different? But the crowd grew larger and the people were pressing in and suddenly Jesus was asking Simon if he could use his boat. He wanted Simon to put out a few feet into the, the lake and, and he'd teach from the boat and Simon thought, well, that's a great idea. So uh, Jesus got in the boat. Simon took it out a little bit. And Jesus began to teach the crowds. And, and Simon had a front row seat to Jesus' teaching. And it was amazing. Now, you would have thought that after being up all night, a sermon would be like an instant recipe for nap time. But, but Simon was enthralled with what Jesus was teaching. And he didn't even realize the time that had passed when Jesus turned to him and said, Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Ha, huh. great, Simon thought. Another wannabe fisherman. I mean, Simon had spent his entire life fishing these waters and now a carpenter turned preacher wanted to tell him how to fish. But this was Jesus. So Simon grudgingly complied. Fine, I'll humor the prophet, he thought. So they rowed out to deeper waters, and Simon, you know, tossed the net over the side, somewhat half-heartedly, uh, and he waited a few minutes and began to pull in another empty net. And all this while, Jesus is watching with a mischievous grin on his face. <laughs> he just is kind of observing with that wry smile, and, and why not? As Simon began pulling the nets in, they were filled with fish. I mean, they had so many fish in the nets, they couldn't even get the net on the, the boat. They, they had to signal for their partners, James and John, to come out with another boat to help them, you know, bring in all of the fish. And so the other boat arrived, and they're loading fish like crazy, and Simon is laughing like a maniac because he is having the best fisherman moment ever. And suddenly... Simon looks up and he sees Jesus and he has that moment of clarity. It's all because of him. He's for real. And, and I'm not worthy to be in the boat with him. And so Simon just leaves the net, leaves the fish, and he falls before Jesus at his feet and, and the words barely escape his lips through the tears. Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Depart from me. I'm not worthy to be in your presence. And then Jesus spoke. The words were wonderful. But the grace and the mercy and the power they delivered to Simon were life-altering. He said, Simon Peter, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And from that moment, everything changed for Peter. Everything changed. Jesus interrupted his life. They got back to shore. Simon gave away the fish. And he left his boats. And he followed Jesus. Now, 
That story is found in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. So uh, I'd encourage you to read that later. Maybe if you've got kids at home, read it with your kids. Uh, talk about the story. But what began as an ordinary, frustrating morning for Simon Peter became a life-changing experience with an impossible ending because Peter's life was never the same. Now, some of you may be wondering why I'm talking about Peter and why I'm talking about Simon. His name was Simon. Uh, Jesus kind of renamed him Peter. Uh, you know him as the Apostle Peter. Uh, so I'm going to probably use that name the rest of this, uh, this message. But think about it. Peter's life was never the same after this moment. I mean, uh, his profession changed, his purpose changed, his identity changed. Everything changed because Peter encountered Jesus. I, I share that with you because some of you think your life is stuck. Some of you think uh, you've got no hope, you've got no expectations, you've got no job. Uh, you're stuck in your house all day. The joy is in short supply. And, and you're starting to believe that it'll take a miracle to change your life to change uh, our situation, to change this pandemic, to, to even then, you're not sure that that would be enough to turn it around. And I want you to know that today's message is for you. In fact, this entire sermon series that we're doing is for you. Uh, we're beginning a, a series today called Impossible. And we're going to be looking at the stories of Jesus uh, where he works miracles, where he does the impossible in people's lives and they experience change because of their encounter with Jesus. And today we're beginning by looking at the story of Simon Peter uh, and how Jesus uh, just filled his day with impossibility. And so I wanna share with you uh, three impossibilities from this story uh, that I think apply to me and apply to you and to pretty much all of us that are paying attention to God. So uh, the first thing I want to share is it's impossible to predict what Jesus will do. It is impossible to predict what Jesus is going to do. Now, uh, think about it this way. It, it, it is completely possible to predict the character with which God's going to act. God's character is consistent. It's unchanging. Uh, he's always loving. He's always gracious. He's always holy. He's always righteous. He's always good. Okay, we know that about God's character. So we can trust in that consistent character. But God is full of surprises. And if you've read the Bible at all, and you read the stories of the Old Testament, you know that's true. God's always doing some crazy thing to rescue his people, deliver his people, provide for his people. But in this story, particularly, I want us to look at the surprises that just happened in these, this brief encounter that Peter had with Jesus. Uh, first of all, Jesus surprised him by borrowing his boat. Peter, can you put out in the water and can we, uh, you know, teach from there? Okay, that's a surprise, sure. And then he surprised him by saying, Peter, can we go out and go fishing? Let's go out to deeper waters. And then Jesus shocked him with the impossible catch of fish. You know, the net's overflowing, so they couldn't even bring him into the boat after a night of fruitless fishing. And then Jesus amazed Peter by inviting him to follow. Jesus said, follow me. Come, now you're going to be a, a fisher of men. So uh, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if you actually believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins, you believe that Jesus was raised from the dead, and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then I want you to know that Jesus is working miracles in your life right now, right now. He's working to bless you, to redeem you, to heal and restore your life. But here's the catch. He's not doing it according to your plan and your script. He really isn't. Uh, one of my favorite Proverbs is Proverbs 16, 9. It says, in his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. So you and I have a plan for our lives and we want God to bless it and stamp it and approve it and make it happen. And uh, God has a plan to bless our lives, but uh, it's not our plan. It's not my plan or your plan. See, God has a plan to do the impossible in your life and the most important thing you can do is say yes. Say yes to Jesus. See, um, I want you to know that obedience is the key 
to seeing miracles. Obedience is the key to seeing miracles. It, 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 what did Peter repeatedly do in the story? He, he, he just kept saying yes to Jesus. Even when he didn't want to, he said yes to Jesus. So Jesus asked, can I use your boat? Peter said, yes, you can. And then Jesus asked Peter, hey, go out in the deeper waters and let's go fishing. And Peter didn't want to. He was grudgingly, okay, you know, even though I've labored in vain all night, uh, sure, let's do it. He said, yes. And then Jesus said, follow me. And Peter said, yes. Can I just tell you, if you want to see life-changing miracles in your life, say yes to Jesus. Say yes to Jesus. And, and, and I encourage that knowing that some of those yeses are going to be easy. You're going to go, yeah, okay, I'm all for that. Great, let's do that, God. Just like, you know, Jesus saying to Peter, hey, can I get in your boat? And you put out a couple of feet into the, into the lake so the people don't push me into the water and crush me. Okay, that was an easy yes for Peter. But then some of those, you know, requests of God on our lives are going to be challenging. Uh, you know, Jesus said, Peter, let's put out in deep waters. And Peter's like, but Lord, we spent all night fishing and got nothing. In other words, he was telling Jesus, this doesn't make sense and it's not going to work. Okay, that's what Peter was telling Jesus, but he obeyed anyway. And, and that's me and you. A lot of times what God asks us to do doesn't make sense. We don't see how it adds up. We don't see how it's going to play out in our lives. And we think this is crazy or we think this is fruitless. And God is just waiting for us to obey. And a lot of times we're not seeing miracles because we're not obeying God. And God is waiting for us to step into that obedience so that he can work in our lives to bless us and change us. Now, some of that obedience that God's calling us to is life altering. And when I say life altering, I mean it changes the direction or the trajectory of your life radically. Because Peter left this encounter and he left his profession and he changed his job and he changed his life and, and everything was different after that moment. And God is going to ask us, all of us at some point, to change the direction of our life. And those are difficult, but those are the moments that open the door to the miracles that God wants to work in our lives, the impossibles that he wants to work in your life. So start obeying whatever God asks you to do. And some of you are saying, I don't know what God wants me to do. I understand that. But here's the thing. God actually wrote down what he wants us to do. It's, it's in a book called the Bible. It's why here at Calvary, we give Bibles away. It's why here at Calvary, we believe that the Bible is the inerrant, inspired word of God that tells us what to believe and how to live. And we want you to read the Bible. We encourage that. Uh, and, and if you don't know where to start reading in the Bible, then, then read the Gospels. Read one of the Gospels. Read the Gospel of Luke. It's the story of Jesus. Read the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, or John. They're, they're all the story of Jesus. And, and I want you to get to know Jesus because then you'll know what God wants you to do. Now, if you're a follower of Jesus right now, then you probably already know what God is asking of you. Because God the Holy Spirit lives in you and he's the voice of truth and he's the voice of teaching and he's the voice of conviction in your life. And he's already prompting you to do some things that you've been wrestling with. So if you know what God is asking you to do, then say yes, do it. Step into obedience. It's life changing. And, you know, maybe that what he's asking you to do is to stop that self-destructive behavior that is destroying you and your family. Maybe what God is asking you to do is to get baptized. You know that you've committed your life to following Jesus, but you've never been baptized. And maybe you're sitting there thinking, what's the big deal about baptism? Why does Calvary always celebrate baptisms? And they're doing baptisms even during this you know, time of social distancing and online worship. Uh, it's because baptism is the first thing that Jesus asks us to do once we commit to follow him. It's a first step in obedience. It's that moment where we go public with our faith, where we, you know, have made a personal decision to follow Jesus, but now we proclaim it to the world. And we say that we are unashamed followers of Christ. So maybe it's to get baptized. Maybe it's to start serving in the church. And you go, I don't know where to serve. I don't know how to serve God. Uh, have you asked? 
Have you taken uh, you know, our equip class, which you know, we'll be offering again once we you know, start meeting again in person? Have you checked out and, and offered to volunteer for any of the service projects we do in the community? Is, is that what God's asking you to do? Maybe God's asking you to begin tithing. And some of you are like, oh, I knew it. Preachers are going to talk about money. Got to give, got to give to the church. Got to give. No, tithing isn't for, for the church. Tithing is for you. Because God kind of throws down a gauntlet, a challenge, and says, will you obey me? Uh, I'm the one who gives you everything. Will you give back some to me? 10% to me? Will you trust me at that point? And, and you know, you've got to wrestle with that, whether you're going to be obedient to God at that point. Maybe God just simply wants you to invite a friend to worship with you. And it's easier now than ever because you can just send a link and invite them to click and watch and, and you know, say, hey, you know, let's watch together and we'll talk online about what you're, what you're seeing and, and you can ask me questions about the service. Heck, you don't even have to invite your friends. You can invite your enemies to watch with you. You know, there's no risk in this right now. Just say, hey, here's what I'm watching and, and it's making a difference in my life and you can, I'd love for you to be a part of this. It's the easiest invite you'll ever make and it can be life changing. What does God want you to do? Maybe, maybe God wants you uh, to go on a mission trip, you know, when we can travel again and, and that's possible. Uh, or maybe he wants you to be a missionary or a pastor. See, here's, here's what I know. God wants you and me to do something. He's always calling us to obedience. And sometimes that's easy and sometimes that's challenging and sometimes it's life altering, but it always leads to the blessing. So Jesus' character is known. He's always loving. He's always gracious. He's always holy. He's always good. But Jesus' actions are unpredictable. So here's the question I want to challenge you with. Is your response to Jesus predictable? Is your response to Jesus, yes, I will? So that's the first impossibility in the story. The second impossibility in the story is it's impossible to be with Jesus and remain unaware of our sin. It is impossible to be with Jesus and remain unaware of our sin. Uh, Peter, was, was, he was with Jesus in the boat, living the fisherman's dream, participating in the midst of a miracle, and suddenly he realized his absolute sinfulness. He was unworthy. And he knew it because he was in the presence of God in the flesh. Uh, this is a, a painfully beautiful part of being close to Jesus. Can I just be honest with you? The closer you get to Jesus, the more aware of your sin you become. Because Jesus is holy. He's perfect. He's sinless. He's pure. He's righteous. And we are not. We are sinners. We, we are defiant. We're rebellious, impure, and unrighteous. And I really hope that doesn't offend you because it's just what the Bible teaches about every one of us. The Apostle Paul in Romans 3 says that there is none who is righteous, not even one of us. For all of us have sinned and come short of God's glory. See, we're all in this boat together and, and the reality is the closer you get to Jesus, the easier it is to see your own sin, your own filth, your own unrighteousness. Uh, and when you become aware of your sin, you've got two choices. There are kind of two options before every one of us. When we see our sin in the light of that relationship with Jesus, we can either get away from Jesus or we can confess our sin. We can either run or we can repent. Now, the Bible calls us to confess our sins because the promise is this. And in fact, the Apostle John, who was there that day, who was the you know, Peter's partner came out there and loaded up fish. Uh, he wrote this in his first letter. He said, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and righteous and will forgive us of all our sins and purify us of all unrighteousness. If we confess. So here's the cycle that Jesus invites us into. And this is kind of an ongoing process in our lives. It doesn't ever stop. So uh, it goes like this. So we get closer to Jesus, okay? Maybe it's because you're listening to sermons. Maybe it's because you're reading your Bible and praying more uh, during this time. Maybe it's because you're just like, I want to learn. I need God and I know it. So we, we get closer to Jesus 
and we become aware of our sin. And we become aware of our sins, so we confess our sin. And when we, when we confess our sins, then we receive forgiveness and experience God's mercy and love in a fresh way, in a new way, in a powerful way. And then, then we're invited to serve with Jesus. And as we say yes to Jesus, we're going to serve with you. Then we get closer to Jesus. And when you get closer to Jesus, you know what happens? You become more aware of your sin. And so then you confess your sin. And then more of God's love and mercy just comes pouring into your life and you're invited to serve with Jesus even more and the cycle happens over and over and over again. So another question for you today. Are you getting closer to Jesus right now or are you walking away from him? Are you in that movement toward Jesus or are you running away? You see, um, it makes all the difference which way you're leaning in your life because one is dealing with your sin in a redemptive way and one is avoiding it and avoiding Jesus. Because the closer you get to Jesus, the more aware of your sin you're going to become. Now, maybe you've never confessed your sin at all. Maybe you've never surrendered your life to following Jesus. Today, we're just going to encourage you to do that. It's as simple as, as praying and just saying, God, I need you. I, I believe in Jesus. I believe he's the Savior. I, I need your forgiveness. I need your grace. Please change my life. He'll do that. And we've got ways for you to contact us, connect with us. Uh, there's buttons that you can push if you're watching that, that simply say, uh, I want to know more or I made a decision. Uh, we've got a page on our, on our website that can explain more. And we'd love to get some information. We'd love to talk with you about this life-changing decision to follow Jesus. So if you, if you just respond and let us know through the prayer requests or through the decision uh, button, we want to reach out to you and provide you some help in this relationship with Jesus. But that is the biggest decision you'll ever make. So the third impossibility that I want to share with you today is simply this. It's impossible to follow Jesus and stay where you are. It's impossible to follow Jesus and stay where you are. Uh, Jesus called and Peter followed. And everything changed. Everything changed. I mean, he was a fisherman and he became an apostle. He, he used to catch fish and soon he would lead an entire movement of catching people. <laughs> he went from being a nobody, complete nobody, who's a, who's a fisherman in the backwaters of Galilee, to being a person that today over 2 billion Christians know who he is. That's life changing. And when we follow Jesus, he changes our lives. That's why our mission at Calvary is to lead people to a life changing relationship with Jesus. Because we know that when you follow Jesus, your life is never going to be the same. Now, here, here's the challenge. Jesus wants to change our lives but we want Jesus to change our circumstances. Jesus wants to fundamentally change who you are, but we want Jesus to change the people who are around us. I want you to recognize this is a tension, and, and if we're gonna really experience the miraculous, the impossible that God has for our lives, then we need to change the way that we uh, talk with God. We need to change the way that we pray. We need to change the way that we think. And this is difficult to do, but necessary if we want to experience the impossible that God has for us. So uh, and this is going to sound crazy to you, but I want you to stop praying for God to change your situation. I know some of you are praying, God, I need help with money. Give me more money. Uh, you're praying for the political situation. You're praying for your person to win, uh, you know, get elected, whatever. You're praying for the pandemic. You're like, you know, terrified that you're going to get sick or your loved ones are going to get sick and you're praying for health and all this. And, and, and I want you to stop doing that. I want you to stop praying for God to change your situation. I want you to stop praying for God to change your spouse. Because some of you are going, God, I, I want you to make her not crazy. God, I want you to make him not lazy. God, I want you to, to you know, change her or, you know, so that uh, you know, she's, she's nicer. I want you to change him so he's not so mean. I want you to stop doing that. I want you to stop praying that God would change your boss or your kids or your in-laws. Now, I still want you to pray that God would bless them and help them and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that, that's good. But here's what I really want us to do. I want you to start asking God to change you. Ask God to change you. 
Ask God to change your attitude about your situation so that your heart is filled with gratitude for what God has given you and how he has provided, so that you start asking God to help you to see how he's working in the people around you and the situations around you. So he can, you know, that, that you can thank him for the health that you have and the reality of eternal life when this world's over. Ask God to change your attitude about the situation. Ask God to change your behaviors and your words in your marriage. If you're married, uh, I know it's, it's a battleground and it's a challenge, but here's the thing. If you'll ask God to help you speak with kindness, if God, you'll ask God to give you patience toward your spouse, to help you be encouraging toward your spouse, it'll make all the difference in your marriage. I want to challenge you to start asking God to change your mindset at work towards your boss. Ask God to bless your boss. Ask God to help you be a better employee. Ask God to change your attitude about your kids or about your in-laws. You see, ask God to change you because if you follow Jesus, if you say yes to Jesus, everything will change. Every relationship will be different. Every situation will be different. All of your circumstances will be different because God is working miracles in you, in your life. And you will see the impossible. You'll experience God's power. You'll see God redeem and restore lives and relationships and people. And God will change your life and he'll change other people's lives. But it begins with us. It begins with you. And Jesus is calling you to follow. And you can't follow Jesus and stay where you are. It's impossible. So how does God want to change you today. And will you say yes to Jesus? Let's pray. Father, thank you for the way that you love us, for the way that you redeem us, and for the reality that you have adopted us as children of God through faith in Jesus. And Lord, we need you to change us change our hearts and our minds so that we can follow you, so that we can serve you, so that we can say yes to you, so that we can confess and get closer to you. But God, that work that you want to do, that miracle that you want to unleash begins in our hearts and in our lives when we invite you to change us. So right now, I pray that you would change me. And God, I pray that you'd give men and women, boys and girls that are watching this everywhere, the courage to invite you to change them. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.